What's up everyone? This video is going to be covering a tool that I use a lot in Ableton and that's Ableton's stock looper. It's going to cover all the features of the looper, so what everything does and then it's also going to go over some tips on how you can use it more effectively and then how I use it to record guitar loops live but so we'll be able to go back and edit individual tracks and layers and then how you can record separate layers and still have control over them. So yeah, stick around to see all that. Quickly before I start, uh, congratulations to Taylor Chapman who won the t-shirt competition. So Taylor, please contact me if you see this. I'm also gonna be trying to contact you before this video goes live as well. And thanks for everyone who entered. I'm also starting a new competition that's gonna end in two weeks on the 23rd of May video. So what you'll win is all my sample packs that I've made to date. So all the premium pack, uh, completely free. All you have to do to enter is like the video, drop a comment on the video and be a subscriber. And then yeah, you'll get all my sample packs for free, whoever the winner is in two weeks. So yeah, on with the video. So the Ableton Looper is something that first appeared in Live 8, I believe. Uh, it's been there ever since. It's a really great tool for doing any sort of live looping stuff, uh, for working on ideas, that sort of thing. It's doing the same sort of thing as your loop pedals would do. So like the Ditto Looper and the Boss Looper pedals, pretty much the same functionality as that, except for a couple of benefits being that it's in the door. So if I go and grab the looper, drop it in. So here's just my effect track for my guitar. The main button you'll want to use is the multifunctional controller, which is this big button here. And this effectively acts as the uh, button would on a loop pedal. So this is what you'd press to start recording the loop, stop it, uh, to wipe the loop, and to overdub. Uh, so you can all be done with different click varieties, which we'll go over in a second. Next here you've got the quantization, which determines how quickly the loop starts when you press the button. So by default it's set to global. Global up here is at one bar, uh, which I can change to none, all the way down uh, to one thirty second uh, of a bar. So I can do the same here. I could change it to none. So on none, it means that as soon as I press record, it's gonna start recording. Um, if I press one bar, then it's gonna wait a bar and then start recording and so on. So if you're triggering it by hand with a mouse or with uh, a MIDI pad or whatever, and it's not quickly accessible, so you're playing the guitar and you wanna be able to control it, then it's difficult to conventionally just press record and then play guitar because there's gonna be a gap. So if you set it to one bar or two bars, if I put the metronome on, so if I set it to none, I've got it's a gap before I can play. Uh, but then if I go ahead and set it to two bars and press play, there's a delay, and then now I can play. That way I've got time to react uh, when I press the button if I've not got a controller. Uh, and then to the right here we've got record X bars. So this means if I hit record and then I hit stop, that'll be the length of the track, however many bars that was, depending on your tempo of the song. Uh, or I can make it a predetermined length. So I can set this to one bar, and then as soon as I hit record, once one bar has happened, it'll stop and it'll carry on the loop again, uh, which then leads into this button here. So it says record one bar then plus or play. So plus is overdub, so once I've recorded one bar, I can record again without having to press anything. And then with play, it just stops and then I can solo over that. So then what I can do is I can play the song, hit record, play. Now it's going to automatically leap over and played that sequence but it's not on the loop. Um, whereas if this was on plus, then this will automatically be an overdub like this. And be playing over again straight away. So next here we've got this song control option. This basically dictates the power that the looper has over the whole track. So if this is set to none, if I play the looper, nothing's gonna happen. The actual main track isn't gonna start. So we're not doing anything the track's not started. If I go to start song, when I press play, it'll also start the song, which is going to start the metronome. And then similarly, uh, because that was on start song, if I stop the loop, the song's going to carry on. If it's on start and stop song, so that stopped the song as well, it stopped recording, it stopped playing, so everything else has stopped. Uh, one thing to mention as well, with the looper, uh, as you've seen, if I press it once, it'll play. If I press it twice, it'll stop. So, 
once play and start recording twice will stop the song so that's two quick clicks once twice stops uh, and then I can also press it again single time to overdub or to play twice to stop and then if I do it twice to stop but on the second click I hold it so click click but hold then it'll wipe the song so click click hold it'll wipe the song and you can start again so that's everything that does and you've also got this uh, undo function so if you've recorded one layer uh, overdubbed it and you made a mistake you can undo it however if, you, uh, if you've overdubbed and you've played it played and played without stopping so even if you've gone looped around a few times uh, everything on that loop will be gone so not just the stuff from the last if it's a one bar loop from the last one bar everything from as long as you pressed overdub to stop will be gone uh, and then you can clear the track with the clear button as well so next you've got this speed function which as it says just changes the speed of the loop so if I play this chord and then you've also got this reverse feature so you can play reverse and then lastly you've got this feedback feature so this effectively changes the volume of the track um, every time it loops around, so if it's on 100% the loop's just going to stay the same if it's on 90% it'll slowly get quieter and if it's on 10% yeah, really quickly it'll be quiet and then the loop will disappear so that's quite a cool feature to play with uh, and then similar to these, the control you've got here you can do all that stuff uh, up here so you've got record, overdub, play, stop and you can also, uh, if you want to double the speed of the track or half the speed of the track you can do that with these buttons here and then lastly there's this drag me option uh, which means that if you've got a loop in here, you can drag the audio out and drop it into a separate channel. So, as I said before, everything can be pretty much controlled by this button. Uh, so, usually I map that by pressing MIDI up here. You can map it to anything, uh, be it a keyboard, or recently I picked up the Native Instruments MK3 Micro. So I can map it to that when that's on MIDI mode, which is nice, because I can also put that on the floor. Uh, but if you've got no MIDI controllers and you want to use this as a loop pedal, what I've also done in the past is just get my wireless mouse, stick some blue tack on the sensor, line that up, and then I can sort of press it with my foot. as a bit of a makeshift loop pedal. And then, as I said before, if you want to stop it, it's two taps, um, which is not always quick enough. So you can map this section here to a different key or note, and that'll instantly stop the loop. Same with anything else here, if you don't want to necessarily double tap, you can map individual parts using that. So the next thing I want to talk about is how I record the loops uh, when I'm doing live guitar loops. So a lot of my videos, I'll be doing a live progression and then I'll overdub and play over it. It could be a few different layers of overdub and then solos on top. Um, obviously I don't want the solos to be looped because I'm playing free, free soloing over that. So the way I do it is, I've got my guitar chain with my guitar effect rack tuner and my looper at the front. Um, obviously depending on where you put the looper is depending on what get pick, picked up. So if I put this before the effects, then I can change the uh, parameters on my saturator or my compressor or anything on there later. Uh, but if I put it afterwards it would take all that in and it would loop as is so I couldn't go back and tweak uh, the sounds that way uh, so when I record it I've got my guitar chain which I'll hit record on and then I'll get a send track so the send track will be to record the whole loop so if I control and then hit record on that as well I can have both being recorded and then I can get the audio in from the track which is guitar chain and then anything I record here we'll go through the process and into send so then if I go on here and I hit record overdub now I stop that what you can see here is that I've got the whole loop here in the send track and then I've got this bit and this bit here, which is the individual layers of the loop that I recorded. Obviously when I'm doing the main one, it would be like a four or eight bar loop here, then a gap, unless I'm playing straight away, and then it'll be the next layer and the next layer, and it'll all be separate. So then what I'd usually do if I wanted to go back and mix the track differently, is I could uh, loop, if I click here and I duplicate the track, then I can loop this, by control D, that's just duplicating that, and then as soon as this comes in, I can loop this as well, 
and I've got the same thing, but I'm able to go into each individual uh, tracks and edit them that way. And then if the track's fine, and I don't want to do that, then I've just got this file here, which is the full audio file in audio format, all the process is done. Um, I can go back and it's perfect. So that's how I approach uh, my live looping. Uh, another thing I sometimes do when I'm doing this, uh, I can also have two loopers. So we're gonna have a control D, duplicate that. So I might have, uh, it could be an eight bar or 16 bar guitar loop that I'm playing, but I might also want some guitar percussion, uh, but I don't necessarily wanna be doing that. But it's 16 bars, especially if it's mid track, it's just a bit boring. So what I can do is have two loopers. This one be set to record one bar. This one be set to record whatever the bar is, 16 bars. And then I can record that, play it, that'll loop. Record this, 16 bars, play it, that'll loop. They're both separate, but they're both getting the whole, the same layer. So I've got this loop running, and if I wanted to add like a... I can overdo it, but I do it that way. Or, I can record with this one. Um, I'll just set this to none so it starts straight away. And it's one bar. And I want this overdub. So now I've got that layer and I've got the main layer. And I can stop this uh, if I wanted to. And then if I wanted, and because I had that start start, which I didn't actually want, it stopped the whole track. But if that was on none, uh, and I play the track again. I can stop that and the other one will carry on. Um, but that, because I had that set to start and stop control, then because I pressed that, it stopped the whole track. So you want both set to non, ideally, or start song. So double tap to stop. So yeah, as I say, the good thing about that is you can have any number of loopers you want. Um, and you can control each independently. And then the final tip was probably more uh, drum related. So if I have a MIDI track, throw a drum rack on there, throw, so I've got the drum hat, duplicate that, control D, and then I will drop in a kick as well. Now I can control and click on record on both, so I can control both now. Hat and the kick. So now what I can do is, uh, if I group them together, I could loop them on the master rack, I could record those, but I have no control over individual tracks. So one uh, better thing I can do is I can get a looper, drag it onto both, and then I drag that and press control, it'll copy it to this rack. And then I can set them both to whatever I want. I'll have a one bar loop with the play. Again, one bar loop with the play. And then if I click MIDI again, then I can map this to a key. And then I can go onto here and map this to a key. So now, uh, if I record, so I have this bad loop, uh, which I can stop the kick, play the kick, stop the hi-hat, and then I can do both at the same time with the MIDI button that I mapped. So that can work on any number of tracks. If you're doing loops with drums or any melodic, melodic things that you want to play at the same time, but have individual control, then you can do it that way. Uh, so yeah, that pretty much covers everything with this video. Thanks for watching. So next week's video is going to be making a lo-fi hip-hop beat from scratch using free resources. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to hear about that first. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Bye.